Hey everyone, in this video we're going to look at how we can use standard heats of formation or standard enthalpies of formation to calculate the enthalpy change for a reaction. Using standard heats of formation is one of the four ways to determine the enthalpy of a reaction, the others being of course bond energies, calorimetry, and Hess's law. And the nice thing about standard heats of formation is all the data we need, we can just look up online. It's available freely to anybody who wants to look it up. I'm going to be using the standard enthalpies of formation table on Wikipedia. A similar table will be found in any AP Chemistry textbook. And on the AP Chemistry test itself, the data for the heats of formation would be found in the question stem itself. So it would say something about determining the enthalpy of the reaction, and there would be a table of data that had these heats of formation in it that you'd be using to solve the problem. But like I said, for this video, we're just going to use the internet to find these values. So let's start off by looking at what do I mean by a standard heat of formation or a standard enthalpy of formation? So a standard heat of formation or standard enthalpy of formation is the enthalpy change to form a substance from its pure elements in standard form. Standard form just refers to how does that element exist at 25 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere of pressure. So is it a solid, liquid, or gas at that temperature and pressure? And does it exist as just one atom or does it exist as a diatomic element such as hydrogen and oxygen and things like that? Now anytime we have an enthalpy change such as a heat of formation, it has to correspond to some reaction. So what we're going to do first is write out the reactions that correspond to the heats of formation values. That's what we're going to do right now. Once we've done three examples of that, then we'll look at an actual reaction that we want to know the enthalpy change for, and we'll use our heats of formation values to calculate the enthalpy change for that later reaction. So here, like I said, we're going to write out the reaction that corresponds to the values that we can find online for a couple different compounds. Let's look at an example. Let's say that we looked up the heat of formation for aluminum chloride, AlCl3. We looked that value up online, but we need to know what reaction would that value correspond with. So, like I said here, this is going to be the enthalpy change to form the substance from its pure elements. Well, what are the elements that make up aluminum chloride? They're aluminum and chloride. So how does aluminum exist at standard form? Well, aluminum is a solid metal at standard form. So we'll write aluminum with the subscript S for solid. And then chlorine exists as a diatomic gas. So we'll write plus Cl2 and a subscript G to represent gas. Now those would combine in a reaction to form AlCl3 solid. Now we need to balance the reaction. But one special rule about heats of formation, they always correspond to a reaction in which we produce one mole of the product. So we can't put a coefficient in front of aluminum chloride other than one, which means we're going to have to have a fraction as one of our coefficients in our reaction. Normally we don't do that, but in this case we'll have to use those fractions for the coefficients. To balance this out then, we would need three halves in front of the chloride. Three halves times two would give us three. And so now we have a balanced chemical reaction here. So whenever we look up online that value of the standard heat information for aluminum chloride, that's going to correspond to this reaction that we just wrote. So let me get on Wikipedia here. I'm just under the standard enthalpy of formation site within Wikipedia. And I'm going to scroll down to this table. And it's got inorganic substances here. There's going to be some organic substances down at the bottom, some aliphatic hydrocarbons, which we'll use one of those a little bit later, as well as some other organic compounds. And so we're just going to find the compound that we want to look for here, which is aluminum chloride. I'm just going to start with the first element there, which is aluminum. And I'll look up the listing for aluminum, find aluminum chloride. And I see here that it's negative 705.63 kilojoules per mole. That's my standard heat of formation for aluminum chloride. That enthalpy change corresponds to this reaction that we just wrote right here. Let's do another example of writing a reaction that corresponds with the heat of formation value that we could look up online. Here's my second example I want to look at. It's going to be the heat of formation for solid aluminum. Well, solid aluminum, what makes up aluminum? Well, just aluminum, right? So aluminum in its standard form is aluminum solid. That's going to react, so not exactly, to form aluminum solid. Wait, this is kind of weird, right? We have aluminum solid and it just stays aluminum solid, nothing really happened, right? There wasn't really a reaction taking place. So if we talked about the heat of formation of solid aluminum, well, it's not going to take any enthalpy change to, to go from solid aluminum to solid aluminum. Let's look this up on, on the table here on Wikipedia. If I look at aluminum, the heat of formation is zero. 
So the heat of formation of any element that's already in standard form is going to be zero. And I'm going to write that here. That's a general rule that we'll use whenever we're doing problems like this. The heat of formation for any element in its standard state is zero because it's already in its standard state. That'll actually make problems a little bit quicker for us to solve, which we'll see in an example at the end of this video. Let's look at a third example of writing a reaction that corresponds with the heat of formation value. What if we were doing this for hydrogen iodide, HI? So we would start with hydrogen. We would write out hydrogen in its standard form is H2 gas plus iodine. Iodine in its standard form is I2 solid. So we need to write that there. And then that's going to form HI or hydrogen iodide. Now that's not balanced yet. And again, we can't have um, a coefficient other than one in front of our, of our product that we're forming for our formation reaction here, which means we'll have to use uh, fraction coefficients for these other two. We'll do half in front of both of those to form HI. I'm going to look up that value for hydrogen iodide on here. So let me find hydrogen. I've got hydrogen here. Um, and hydrogen iodide is positive 26.5. If you remember our first example, we got a negative value when we looked this up. So these values of heats of formation could be positive or negative. It'll be a negative value if it's an exothermic formation and it'll be a positive value if it's an endothermic formation. It could be either way, or as we saw in the second example, it could be zero. So if we were forming hydrogen iodide from its elements of hydrogen and iodine in standard form, it would consume 26.5 kilojoules per mole. All right, great. So at this point, we can write the reaction out that corresponds with the heat of formation value. But now let's get to the good part, which is using the data that we have online for the heats of formation values to write the enthalpy change for some reaction that we're trying to determine the enthalpy change for. So here's how we can do that. We can write that the enthalpy change of a reaction is going to be the sum of the heats of formation of the products minus the sum of the heats of formation of the reactants. Let's talk about why that is real quick. The products in any reaction are being formed. That's what makes them a product. They're being formed. So that will correlate exactly with the heats of formation of those products. That should make sense, right? We're producing the products or we're forming the products. So we will keep the same sign. If they're negative, they'll stay negative. If they're positive, they'll stay positive. The reactants, however, we're not forming reactants. We're doing the opposite. We're taking the reactants and we're breaking them down. We're unforming them. And so instead of keeping the sign, this negative doesn't mean they'll be negative. It means we're going to take the opposite sign. So if the heat of formation of a reactant is negative, we'll change it to positive. If the heat of formation of a reactant is positive, we'll change it to negative. Again, to recap that, the heat of formation of products will keep the sign because they're products. They are being formed, so they already correlate with the heat of formation values. Reactants, however, are not being formed. They're doing the opposite, so we're going to change the sign for the heat of formation of our reactants. I'm not going to get into the reason of why that is, but if you remember Hess's law, we could show this using Hess's law, that if we added up all of those heats of formation reactions, like, like the ones that we looked at earlier in the video, and we manipulated those reactions to where all the things would cancel out, that's why what we're doing now will work. It's really an extension of Hess's law, but you don't need to know how to do that in order to answer questions on the AP test. So we're going to skip over some of that theory here and jump into solving a problem. So here's the problem that I want to look through here. We're going to use heats of formation data to calculate the enthalpy change for this reaction. And it's going to be methane gas plus oxygen gas forming carbon dioxide gas and water, uh, liquid water. This is going to be the, the combustion of methane in the presence of oxygen. So here's how we'll do this. We're going to set up an equation that matches this format right here. So our enthalpy change will equal, and we'll start with our products. We're going to look up these values, and then we're going to keep the sign since they're the products that are being formed, and we're looking up heats of formation values. So the first one that we have here is carbon dioxide. So I'm going to find carbon dioxide gas on my list here. And it looks like carbon dioxide in the gas form is negative 393.5. So I'm going to write that there. Notice I used a big bracket here. I like to use the square brackets. Um, to separate my products from the reactants, especially because we're going to have to distribute this negative to both of the reactants. I find that using the, the square brackets helps me to organize the problem a little bit better. So I'm going to keep that sign of negative. Remember, this positive just means we keep the sign. So negative 393.5 um, plus, and now I'm going to have to take two times whatever the heat of formation of liquid water is. So plus two times 
Now let me look this up for water. Water starts with hydrogen. Water, and this is liquid water, so I have to use this value right here. It's negative 285.8. So plus 2 times negative 285.8, and I'll close out my parentheses and my brackets. Now for the reactants, I'm going to use a minus sign. That's going to get distributed to both of the compounds that are um, our reactants. Okay, so our reactants, the first one is methane. So let me look up methane. Methane on this particular table here is going to be down under the hydrocarbons. So methane, it looks like it's negative 74.9 kilojoules per mole. I want to make sure you use the right units, not kilocalories working in kilojoules per mole. Negative 74.9. And so negative 74.9 plus 2 times. And if you notice on these, these coefficients here match the coefficients in the reaction. Now, oxygen gas, that already is in its um, standard form. So if I look up oxygen gas on here, I should expect to find... Um, zero. So I'm going to look this up and I see that oxygen gas diatomic is zero. Now I didn't have to look that up though. If I remember that oxygen gas diatomic is the standard form, then I know that that value is going to be zero. On the AP Chem test, a lot of times they just won't give you that value. They'll expect you to know, oh, I have to use zero for that because it's already a pure element in standard form. So now I'm just going to punch that all into the calculator. I'll get my change in enthalpy is negative 890.2 kilojoules per mole. That negative sign means that it's exothermic. Now, whenever you do this calculation, the easiest mistake to make is not distributing the negative to both of the reactants. In this case, because I had a reactant that was zero, it didn't really matter. But if that, if the two reactants, if neither of them is zero, it's really important that that minus gets distributed to both of those reactants on this side right here. On the equations and constant sheet for AP chemistry, that this equation is found on there. It's the delta H equation that's found in the thermochemistry section. You can see that right here. And later on, we can extrapolate this method out to standard entropies and also standard Gibbs free energies. So what we're learning here actually applies exactly the same to entropy and Gibbs free energy um, later on in the thermodynamics unit. One more thing I want to point out before we go is this equation can easily get confused with the equation for bond energies. And the equation for bond energies is actually not products minus reactants. It's reactants, or the bonds that are broken in the reactants, minus the bonds that are formed in the products, which is backwards from what we're looking at here. So the point that I'm making here is don't just memorize this formula. You can look up that formula for standard heat information in the AP Chemistry Equations and Constant Sheet, but I would think about it like this. You know it's going to be the products are going to keep their sign Hence that positive sign right there because these are heats of formation and products are what gets formed. Then you will change the sign or take the opposite sign for any heats of formation of reactants because reactants aren't getting formed. It's the opposite that's happening to the reactants. They're getting broken down. Hence we need that minus sign. Bond energies, on the other hand, it takes energy to break a bond. Hence we'll use positive values for the reactants because bonds are breaking. And then we would use negative values for the products because in the products we're forming bonds. Energy gets released whenever we form bonds, and therefore the, the bond energies of the products would be negative. That's how I think about this so that I don't get these confused in my mind. All right, I hope that was helpful in you understanding what standard heats of formation are, where to find them, and then how to use those standard heats of formation to determine the enthalpy change of a reaction. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.